this story, I am the news. Before was Andrew Tate, now is Russell Brand. I've received two extremely disturbing letters, or a letter and an email, one from a mainstream media TV company, one from a newspaper listing a litany of extremely egregious and aggressive attacks, as well as some pretty stupid stuff like uh, my community festival should be stopped, that I shouldn't be able to attack mainstream media narratives on this channel. But amidst this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. In a world where massive bombshells and instant news sells, people being allegedly harassed are no longer going to the police, but to big news broadcast stations to make their confessions and allegations. So, this is all it all started. A Channel 4 TV documentary and in joint reports in the Times of London and Sunday Times newspapers gathered four women who have not been named alleged that Brand raped, sexually assaulted or abused them between 2006 and 2013. One of the women said she was had a three-month relationship with Brand when she was 16. Another woman alleged that Brand raped her in 2012 at his Los Angeles home. One of Brand's accusers, who used the pseudonym Alice, told the Times she was 16 years old when she began a three-month relationship with the forgetting Sarah Marshall star, who was then 31. Though 16 is the legal age of consent in the United Kingdom, the woman alleged that Brand groomed her, pressured her to perform sexual acts and raped her. Alice described to the Times having to push Brand off of her and punching him in the stomach on one occasion. Alice told the Times that Brand referred to her as the child and would send a car for her to be picked up at school and taken to his home. Russell engaged in the behaviours of a groomer, looking back, but I didn't even know what that was then, or what that looked like. Alice told the Times. Another woman said Brand raped her in the US. Another one of Brand's accusers in the Channel 4, the Times and the Sunday Times investigation, who used the name Nadia, said that Brand raped her in 2012 at his Los Angeles residence. Nadia told reporters that Brand invited her to his home after the two had consensual sex, but on this occasion wanted a friend to join them, according to the Times. When Nadia refused, Brand pushed her against a wall and raped her, she alleged. One woman alleged that Brand sexually assaulted her when they worked together. One woman in the Channel 4, the Times and the Sunday Times investigation, said Brand sexually assaulted her when they worked together in LA. Brand was also accused of exposing himself. Brand worked with Channel 4 from 2004 and 2007, when some of the alleged behaviour is said to have occurred. One Channel 4 employee, who used the pseudonym Rachel, told the Times that Brand exposed his penis to her in his dressing room and made insinuation about her performing oral sex on him. Some Channel 4 colleagues said Brand made them feel like pimps. Some Channel 4 crew members told the Times that they felt like they were working as a pimp for Brand as he pursued members of the audience for sex, according to NBC News. We have asked the production company who produced the programmes for Channel 4 to investigate these allegations and report their findings properly and satisfactorily to us, the network said. Channel 4 is also conducting its own internal investigation. Episodes of Big Brother's Big Mouth and The Great British Bake Off, featuring Brand, have been removed from Channel 4's streaming service. Some events allegedly happened while Brand worked for the BBC. Some events the accusers described allegedly happened while Brand worked as a host and presenter for the BBC from 2006 to 2008. Interesting that while he worked at BBC, no one came up with any allegations, and now they are coming up. The UK Metropolitan Police Service told NBC News that it received a report of a sexual assault allegedly involving Brand that occurred in 2003 in London on September 18, a day after the allegations were reported on television and in newspapers. Russell Brand is being investigated by a second police force in the wake of allegations about the comedian. Thames Valley Police said a woman contacted the force two weeks ago with new information in relation to reports of harassment and stalking. The Metropolitan Police previously confirmed it had received a number of allegations of sexual offences. Brand has been accused of rape and sexual assaults during a seven-year period at the height of his fame. The allegations were made in a joint investigation by the Sunday Times, the Times and Channel 4's dispatches. The BBC understands the woman reported her allegations to Thames Valley Police numerous times between 2018 and 2022, but no further action was taken. Mr Brand had also accused the woman of harassment against him in 2017. 
absolutely refutes. The Force confirmed it was looking into the new information, but it would be inappropriate to comment on an ongoing investigation. The BBC has approached Brand for a response to these claims. The comedian and actor has previously denied very serious criminal allegations and extremely egregious and aggressive attacks, which he said he absolutely refutes. The Dispatches program, Russell Brand, in plain sight, heard four women accuse Brand of sexual assaults between 2006 and 2013. During that time, Brand held several jobs, including at Channel 4 and BBC Radio 2. The investigation, which aired on 16th and September, claimed he had also displayed predatory and controlling behaviour, and behaved inappropriately at work. The 48-year-old said his relationships had always been consensual. In a response to the allegations of non-recent sexual offences reported to the Met in September, Brand live-streamed a video on Rumble. The actor and comedian was critical of the mainstream Amidst media. this litany of astonishing, rather baroque attacks are some very serious allegations that I absolutely refute. The relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I don't mind them using my books and my stand-up to talk about my promiscuous consensual conduct in the past. What I seriously refute are these very, very serious criminal allegations. He said there was an apparent concerted effort between the legacy media and the state to silence independent voices. In the Sunday Times, Times and Channel 4 investigation, four women levelled accusations against Brand between 2006 and 2013. Brand rose to fame as a stand-up comic in Britain in the early 2000s, which led to starring roles on Channel 4 and later BBC Radio, where he capitalised on a reputation for outrageous behaviour and risque banter. He later made the jump to Hollywood, appearing in films such as Forgetting Sarah Marshall in 2008 and the remake of Arthur in 2011. Brand was married to US pop star Katy Perry from 2010-2012. In recent years, he became a political commentator and influencer posting YouTube videos on subjects such as personal freedom and the COVID-19 pandemic. Brand has been unfairly stripped of revenue on his YouTube channel following these allegations. But regardless of the outcome, he isn't going anywhere. These allegations pertain to the time when I was working in the mainstream, when I was in the newspapers all the time, when I was in the movies. And as I've written about extensively in my books, I was very, very promiscuous. Now, during that time of promiscuity, the relationships I had were absolutely always consensual. I was always transparent about that then, almost too transparent. And I'm being transparent about it now as well. And to see that transparency metastasized into something criminal that I absolutely deny makes me question is there another agenda at play? Particularly when we've seen coordinated media attacks before, like with Joe Rogan, when he dared to take a medicine that the mainstream media didn't approve of. And we saw a spate of headlines from media outlets across the world using the same language. I'm aware that you guys have been saying in the comments for a while, watch out, Russell, they're coming for you. You're getting too close to the truth. Russell Brand did not kill himself. I know that a year ago there was a spate of articles. Russell Brand's a conspiracy theorist. Russell Brand's right wing. I'm aware of news media making phone calls, sending letters to people I know for ages and ages. It's been clear to me, or at least it feels to me, like there's a serious and concerted agenda to control these kind of spaces and these kind of voices. And I mean my voice along with your voice. His relationship with pop star Katy Perry ended respectfully despite what the media portrays. You know, I'm okay with showing what's behind the curtain and also okay with showing that side of me because I think it helps people relate better and, are, and think of me as... A, human being, which is really important, and for girls to know that they don't have to be flawless in order to, you know, get success. I was very careful every step of the way, uh, it's why we didn't uh, sell our wedding photos, um, and it's why, you know, we're both trying to keep it between each other. Um, it, but it is a lesson learned, and I hope that uh, everybody has to know that, obviously, if you have problems, it's okay, and you're not alone in what you think are your unique problems. And both of them esteem each other. Some aspects of it were like amazing, like she's a, an a, a amazing person, and it was kind of incredible to live for a moment in that eye of the cyclone type mm. aspect of fame. Aside from my like, sort of feelings of affection for uh, Katie, it's a time that I remember as being a little bit chaotic.
I was thinking about all you were saying about your journey with addiction. Yes. What stage did it get to? How bad was it? It was the dominant and defining part of my life from when I was about, you know, from when I was about 16 till when I stopped when I was 27, but particularly the last five years, I suppose, I was told that if I didn't stop in like the next six months, I'd be dead or in prison or in an institution of some kind. So it, it got like quite extreme. I think I was a disconnected person, like from uh, probably from myself, but probably from other people and certainly from any sense of higher purpose or God. So how did anything change in your life? It took a long while actually, because it wasn't just like, it was, when you stop drinking and stop taking drugs, you're confronted with the nature of the problem. That The problem is feelings of worthlessness and shame and anger and loneliness and sadness and fear, all of those things now you're suddenly living with in a very uh, raw way. What I've found to be necessary is a sort of a connection to yourself, to myself, a connection to other people and a connection to a higher power. You sort of missed your childhood really. You. It's like you had to grow up so fast, but you weren't ready for it. Yeah, I, I think you may be right about that. Yeah, that my childhood was a little bit erratic and fearful. Well, that's not a condemnation of my parents who did their very best. Yeah. Uh, but like uh, subsequently, yeah, I went from childhood into the sort of chaos of addiction. And then there's a different type of chaos in being like famous, really. It's a different kind of peculiar world to it. British comedian Russell Brand met his current wife, Laura Brand, before his first marriage to Katy Perry. But after his and Perry's subsequent divorce, he and Laura reconnected and got married. Brand and Laura first met when she was an art student. Hello, I'm Russell Brand. And I'm Laura Brand. And we're here for Hope From Home on World Health Day. What are we gonna do, Laura, as our contribution to this? I'm going to show Russell and you how to make squishy soap. Just to be clear, is that literally soap that's squishy? It is exactly that. If you after rekindling their relationship, they welcomed daughters Mabel and Peggy in 2016 and 2018, respectively. And in June, it was revealed that they were expecting their third. The couple has historically kept their children's lives private, but have spoken occasionally about their family life. The diary of a CEO podcast host, Stephen Bartlett, revealed during an interview with Brand in June that the couple were expecting another child. You fell in love and you've got two children. You've got a third on the way, around the corner. That's a very special love you have found, Bartlett said. Russell spoke about being a father. I think it's to have something outside of yourself that's more important than you. He added that being a dad is the most wonderful thing. Teaches you, teaches me, taught me there's a lot more important things in this world than me. But I learned this lesson in a variety of ways now. There's a lot more important stuff in this world than what I want and what I think and what I reckon. It don't amount to much amidst the infinite. It taught me that love is real, that the most miraculous things are accessible and ordinary and animal, that you can procreate life into being what a gift and it flows through you and we're part of an endless chain and God has no grandchildren. They belong to the world. They don't belong to you. And it's your job to just stand there and bring out of them whatever's in them and just stand back and marvel and weep at what's in them. Weep. I, the horror, the beauty, the horror, the dreadful beauty of what a child unfolds into. The awareness that they, that they, in the best case scenario, the best case scenario, they are walking into a future that you will not be there to, guide them through because it's so ordinary Stephen any old lady any old man you chat to anywhere oh yeah my mum was like that my dad was like that my little girls oh, it's just it's just so beautiful I don't mind them using my books and my stand-up to talk about my promiscuous consensual conduct in the past. What I seriously refute are these very, very serious criminal allegations. Also, it's worth mentioning that there are witnesses whose evidence directly contradicts the narratives that these two mainstream media outlets are trying to construct, apparently in what seems to me to be a coordinated attack. And plainly, they are working very closely together. While we remain in this censored, controlled environment that the whole media outlet has turned into, one question remains. Is the true predator 
those who have committed consensual unworthy acts, when they have truly changed and admit their past behaviour, or those who dig into others' past to blame, condemn and attack them, not because they care, but simply for the sake of maintaining their own toxic empires. In the end, which one are the most truly dangerous to society? This is Buim TV. Subscribe and tune in.